And I just wanted to welcome everyone to the first session of Leadership for Change, Moving from Ideas to Action webinar. Um, it's brought to you by Redleaf Press, and we have our presenters here, uh, Fiona Stewart, Cassandra O'Neill, and Monica Brinkerhoff. Fiona is the program director of the Child Care Alliance of Los Angeles, uh, which is a network of child care resource and referrals across the, uh, across the county. Is that right? Hmm. Um, and you oversee, <laughs> you oversee countywide collaborative programs. Uh, Cassandra O'Neill is the CEO of Leadership Alchemy and has over 25 years of experience building leadership capacity in the social sector and has worked with over 200 organizations, including libraries and schools, government agencies, foundations, and nonprofit organizations. And Monica is the organization and employee development director at Child Care, or I'm sorry, Child Parent Centers Incorporated, the Head Start grantee for Southeastern Arizona. And my name is Meredith Burks. I'm the product marketing and customer experience manager at Redleaf Press. Um, Redleaf Press is the publishing division of Think Small, which is a CCRNR in Minnesota. And we contribute to our agency, agency's mission of advancing quality care um, and education of children in their crucial early years by creating practical, actionable, affordable resources um, for early childhood professionals. Resources like Fiona's book, Building Together, <laughs> Collaborative Leadership in Early Childhood Systems, and Monica and Cassandra's book, Five Elements of Collective Leadership for Early Childhood Professionals. Um, and this is where sort of the idea from the series came from, these two books um, coming together and the four of us having a conversation at Macy, uh, was it at PLI or annual conference? PLI. Yes. So I'm very excited. If you have not read these books, um, that is fine. This is not a book study <laughs> webinar, um, but you will, I'm going to release a 20% off um, discount code for both of them at the end of the series. Um, so this is really something different. It's meant to be interactive and provide ideas and support at whatever stage you are in your leadership journey. Um, and then I'm just going to show you a quick Reminder of the schedule. It's a five part series. If you're here, that means you've registered and you are registered for the whole series. Um, and then after the session, I am going to be sending email follow ups. Um, so if you have unsubscribed from Redleaf's emails in the past, maybe it's a good idea to go back and resubscribe so you don't miss um, again that discount code links to any of the materials and slides and recording from today. So, and with that, I'm going to hand it over to Monica to start. All right. Thanks, Meredith. So I'm going to build a little bit on what Meredith uh, just talked about related to Fiona's book and Cassandra's and my book. book. Um, so it was wonderful when we all met and we had some really exciting conversations about leadership, about change, about the context that we're all currently working in right now. And um, what we ended up talking about, and, and I think this is something that we're all very well aware of, is that we live in an uncertain, rapidly changing context and environment, and the world is super complex right now. And at the same time, we all come to this work, early childhood education, because we want to make change. We want to create conditions where children and the people who care for them can thrive. So when we talked about it, we decided that, you know, in order to make system level change, or even change within an organization or a team, you really need to start with yourself. So that's what we're gonna be focusing on for this webinar, is really that idea that, um, first of all, transformation happens in a series of repeated small, tiny changes often. And if you're familiar with the idea of the tipping point, it's not one big change, it can be many multiple changes throughout the day. And really just remembering that starting with yourself some self-awareness and paying attention to your everyday interactions is what can get that ball rolling for transformation. So next we're gonna talk about the goals for this webinar. 
So again, we're going to be focusing on where do, where do I start? It all kind of starts with me. So today you're going to have a chance to explore your own beliefs about leadership, have some time to think about what your values are related to leadership, um, dream about your leadership aspirations and what, what do you really hope for for yourself. And then at the end, we'll give you some time to design an experiment so that you can try some new things. All right, so I'm going to hand it over Great. to Fiona. Great. Well, good morning or afternoon, wherever you might be <laughs> across the world. So let's start a little bit by thinking about leadership and change and what that means to us. And we were very intentional about pairing those two words together because leadership really is often about change. It's about working for change in some way. And leaders are really ready to sort of dive in and think about maybe a different outcome or a different way of doing things. Um, as Monica said, it's really about thinking towards the future a little bit and how we might change things that are different than they are today. So let's start by surfacing some of our thoughts, our assumptions, our beliefs about leadership and change. So what we're gonna ask you to do is um, think about what that word means to you. Let's start with that. So um, one thing you could do is if you want to capture some of this for yourself to keep for later is you could get out a piece of paper, maybe put it into four sections, like fold it one time, fold it again. Um, and then you can write down those ideas for yourself, but we're going to also do it in the chat as well. So start with that one word, leadership. What does it mean to you? What words come to mind when you think of that word? Why is it important to you? Just take a moment and chat and put like one word in the chat. And then we're going to go through some of those answers and think together about what leadership means to us all. Great. Got it right off the bat. We have vision, integrity, influence, inspire, activation. Activation. I love Good that. One. Modeling behaviors. Guiding. Empower. Wow. Facilitation. Leading by example, bringing out the best in people. That's a good one. Growth. Modeling. Mm -hmm. Guidance. I love that. Yeah. Journey. Encouragement. Absolutely. Encouraging people. Definitely a part of leadership. Vision, absolutely. We'll be talking a little bit about that today as well. Reflecting. Mm -hmm. Leadership meaning active change through collaboration, building on the ideas of others. Absolutely. Collaboration, yep. And support. Absolutely, great ideas. Building buy-in, mm -hmm. definitely a part of leadership. So a lot of great ideas coming up. A lot of themes around obviously working with others that leadership is not definitely something that you're not doing by yourself. It's about collaborating, support with for others, building buy-in with others, motivation. Let's switch to the next slide and we'll talk about uh, some of the ideas that, uh, that we've heard some coming up today and some of the ideas that we've had as well. And, um, you know, leadership is really not about position or title. I mean, as you can see from the words in the chat, it's really about your approach to work, right? Your perspective, your sort of way of doing things, whether you're being motivational or inspirational or collaborative or modeling, all of those things that you were typing into the chat. It's really about your perspective, right? Your vision to be aspirational and to sort of lead towards a new, a new way of doing things maybe in your community. And it is an active and dynamic state. Someone talked about taking action. Absolutely, it's really about working towards something different. Um, and it's about seeing something different maybe than the current reality, right? And working towards that, that sort of new way of doing things. And it comes down to 
sometimes the quality of leadership, right? If we're going to move towards something different, as that bullet point says, the difference between creating success and mediocrity, mediocrity really comes down to the leadership within teams or organizations or communities. And really thinking about how that change can be positive, that it leads towards something different and that's a, a, a place of growth and a place of organizational change or community change. All right. So we've talked a little bit about leadership and what does that mean? I'm actually really pleased to see what people were typing in. I, I feel like we've made some huge progress that those were the things that people were typing in as opposed to some of the things that I've heard in the past when we ask groups that it's much more um, progressive than, you know, the kind of old school way of thinking about it. So we'll see what comes up with this word. So change, what is change? What does it mean to you? Um, and if you could type in the chat box again, if you could select all panelists and attendees, then everyone can see. So what comes to mind when you hear that word? So people are typing in growth and opportunity, transformation, very uh, exciting, doing things differently, improvement, encouragement. <laughs> changing habits, open mind. I love it. This Resistance. is an amazing, mm. yeah, this yep. is an amazing group. <laughs> yes, so resistance always comes up. This time it wasn't right first. A new That's direction, different yeah. approach. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Long-term and ongoing can make people nervous. It's sometimes it feels hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Disruption. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. Doing something different is, is going to cause some level of, of disruption, some level of maybe hardship because it's, it's going to be different than what you know. And that gets us out of our comfort zone. Yeah. And as Monica had, had met, yes, equilibrium. Okay, you're reading our minds. That's mm -hmm. in the next slide. Uh, <laughs> exciting or frightening? Yeah. So one of the things that Monica had said earlier is that, you know, we're in this time of rapid change. Someone just typed it in. I feel like we're all in the same wavelength. Um, like this, the pace and the acceleration of change that we have to respond to is just enormous. And then there's also, you know, thinking about changes that we want to make and that we want to plan and work towards. Yeah, scary. So one of the things that you know we talk about a lot is our brains really want to have homeostasis, you know, our that resistance that that people talk about that we notice in ourselves. It's it's kind of one of the things as, as part of our nervous systems that you know, we, we definitely can't get rid of it. Um, that's why we are around and our survival is because, you know, we have this nervous system that's always looking out for potential, um, you know, risks and threats that we can totally work with it to override it and to be like, you know what, we're okay. And we can navigate ourselves in this environment. Um, yeah, someone just typed in change can be adapting to different situations, but also realizing that there are opportunities for advancement. Yeah, change is important because it can be difficult, but also looking towards um, something different, as, as Fiona had said, like that dreaming, the different reality. And sometimes you might be clear on what that is that you want that's different, and sometimes it's really not known. And at some points, it almost feels unimaginable. But if you really have that mindset, which people are talking about, about having these growth opportunities, then we can work together with each other to figure out what is the opportunity that is facing us or opportunities, our, our multiple potential futures. So if we go to the next slide, you'll see that um, change may include disequilibrium and discomfort and it can lead to transformation and growth. So this is something people have already been talking to. Somebody typed, it seems like change that doesn't have a transparent reason behind it is what frightens many, right? And that's because our brains make up stories immediately if we don't have the information about what is happening or why our brains make up a lot of stories and we don't know that often and so we think it's the truth so like there's so many examples in our daily life um if you uh, if you have a boss that tells you oh i want to talk to you later in the day and doesn't tell you what about you're probably going to be worried all day about what that is and it's often nothing that's a risk at all 
it is, um, you know, something that was, you know, one time someone shared this example in a training that we were doing that it was about a newsletter. And so the person who is, you know, at the high, top of the hierarchy and has supervisory, you know, responsibilities over other employees often doesn't realize the effect of what they're saying. And so the more transparent, the more we can be with others, the easier it is for our brains to be like, okay, this is okay, I'm not gonna get fired. I mean, people really do worry, even if, no matter how high performing they are and how valuable they are, that they're gonna get fired. Those, those stories get made up in their minds all the time, just because somebody might say something like, I wanna talk to you, and they don't know about what. Yeah, so, Cassandra, I think, I think just to add, I, there's so many people that are motivated by fear and, and, and a sense of scarcity and aren't even aware of it. So I yes. think that's, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the next slide, we have a quote from one of our favorites, Pima Chodron. When we are willing to stay even for a moment with uncomfortable energy, we gradually learn not to fear it. And so this is so important in dealing with change ourselves, in dealing with change that's facing others that we're working with. And it is really true, as Monica said, like, we're, you know, we have this culture of fear right now and scarcity that is our dominant culture. And that leads people to get kind of caught up in these emotions. And so taking a step back, really just breathing and just as this quote says, just instead of, you know, trying to get rid of or run away from something that we find un discomfort, you know, uh, uh, uncomfortable, if we can just stay with it, then it gradually becomes easier for us to, to deal with. So the next slide, we're just kind of talking again, we thought we would do a tee up for the whole series as, as our kickoff today, really thinking about what's leadership, what does it mean, what's change, what does that mean, and now putting them together, really thinking about, and this is really what we're gonna be exploring for the rest of the series through those concentric circles that Monica introduced in the beginning, starting with ourselves, and then working outwards to our teams, organizations, and communities. So the, the question, you know, the big guiding question is what are your thoughts about the relationship between leadership and change? So if anyone has any thoughts come up immediately and you wanna share them, go ahead and type in. If not, don't worry about it. This is, this is something we're gonna be exploring. Okay, we have a couple uh, of thoughts, the importance of giving them because it's direct. Um, not sure what that is referencing, but I think it's giving them the reason behind change. Oh, like the okay. Thank you. Of, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> it can be transformational, but can also hinder advancement. Uh -huh. All right. Well, I think I'm turning this back over to Fiona. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So where we think about starting is to realize, first of all, you're not doing this alone, right? Leadership, as we talked about before, is really about working with others. And there's going to be others around who are also ready to work for change. Part of this journey really might be trying to find out who some of those folks are. Because I think if you start to look around and, and think about the people that are out there working towards change um, or that have ideas, you know, those are the be the people that maybe you're going to pull into some of these uh, this work with you. Because working collaboratively is going to be transformational, right? If you're going to do something with people and they're going to bring their ideas and you're going to add your ideas and you're going to be thinking about different ways to do things, then the outcome of that is going to be different than it is today. It's going to be a different kind of reality. And, um, you know, some of that can be scary, but at the same time, it means there's going to be a lot of opportunities and there's going to be a lot of opportunities to work with people and, and put your heads together and think about where you, you want to get there. And the thing about that, too, is that when you're working with others, the results are not just yours or mine, but ours together, ours collectively, because we've been working together to work towards change. So one thing that I sometimes try to do in, in meetings, because sometimes it's like that, that first step is the hard one to take, right? That kind of scary moment that we talked about a minute ago. And one thing that I sometimes throw out on meetings that I find effective is to go, you know, what if? What if we did this? What if we did that? Because it kind of puts it out as a question and makes it from a place of curiosity rather than a place of fear. It's, it's trying to open the door into more opportunities. And, and sometimes it even brings a little bit of humor to the room, which can sometimes help, you know, lighten that up a little bit. Um, but I find that sometimes that question of what if gets other people going, yeah, yeah, what if? And then it opens that place 
for where we can start to think together and think collaboratively. So let's spend a little bit of time thinking about some of our values with this work. So just type into the, into the chat, what are some of the values that you think are important to you when you think about your leadership values? So take a few minutes and put those in the chat again. You can write some of these down on paper to save for yourself for later. But we'll spend a little bit of time thinking about the values that we want to bring to this work when we start to work collectively and collaboratively with others. Right, trust. So I'm seeing yep. trust, honesty, open communication, authenticity. You're reading our mm -hmm. minds. <laughs> Transparency, <laughs> connection, optimism, integrity. Yes. Partnership, equity, trust, communication, and integrity, open communication, inclusion, transparency, mentoring, more trust, acknowledging our own biases, honesty, being calm, ethics, diversity, trust, inclusion, strength, space. Avoiding emotional decision making. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Honesty. Inclusion. Ethics. This is a great list. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Willingness to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And the ben giving people the benefit of the doubt. Yes, we talk about that all mm -hmm. the time. Yeah, positivity. Mm -hmm. Assuming best intentions, that's great. It's a good way to approach the work, uh, absolutely. Yes, willing to Yeah, understanding it. adult learning. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Well, let's switch to the next slide and we'll talk a little bit about some of the ideas that we came up with. And you'll see here, look at that, a lot of the same words that you all put into the chat. <laughs> We're all thinking together today. Um, so some of the words that we thought were important in terms of leadership values, one is someone put in vision, you know, to be future thinking, right, to be working towards whatever that greater purpose is that we're all trying to strive for. And integrity, absolutely, doing the right thing, even when no one's looking and just making sure that you're always striving beyond just your individual self-interest, but towards that greater good. And respect, right, to build relationships that are honest, someone put honest in there and trustworthy. Um, and making sure that you're valuing other people's inputs and ideas. And absolutely trust is another big one to encourage everyone to be open and honest and transparent, I think was a word that someone typed in as well. Openness, so to think and work together, be open to other ideas, but also other viewpoints, other strengths, right? We're all going to try to bring a balance of our, of our different strengths to the work. And knowledge curiosity, reflection, right? So important to stay curious, open to new ideas, seeking out new information, maybe new way of doing things. And purpose and initiative, to be motivated to work towards goals and attain end results. And perseverance, definitely leadership takes some perseverance, right? Sometimes this work can be, can be long and we have to stay steadfast and, and working together. Um, especially when you're working with, with others, sometimes it takes longer to bring in more viewpoints and more ideas and, and wrestle through those and think about all those together. So, um, you know, one example I was thinking of when I was thinking about the word perseverance is, um, you know, here in California, we, we, we got some systems building work that we're all jumping into in a variety of ways. And, and, it's, and it's slow going sometimes. And sometimes it's dealing with systems that are bigger than us, like, you know, the state infrastructure or something like that. And, um, you know, sometimes I think, boy, you know, this is going to be awesome in like five years. And I'll say that part, <laughs> you know, bring a little lightness to the conversation, but it's also to kind of remind people like this is, this is, this is a long game. It's not a short game. Um, if you want to work towards something to be different, it's going to take some time to get there. And, and, but to keep that, that eye on the, on the vision ahead, that it is going to be awesome later on it's we're going to get to that place where we really work towards that goal we were we were striving for yeah so we're going to get there mm -hmm. it might take a little bit and inclusivity another really important thing i think um i think when we think about inclusive we you know we think about different viewpoints different ideas including different kinds of people but i also think we need to be sure to make sure that 
the people who are going to be impacted by whatever it is we're working on that are going to be part of implementing it are part of that as well. And that might be people you haven't thought of. It might be parents. It might be some of the providers or some of the QRIS coaches or whatever it is that you're working on. Make sure that their voice is part of it too, that they have a way to influence or provide feedback and, and thinking into where you're trying to get to. Some great ideas. Okay, and back to Monica. All right. So, so far we've talked about leadership, we've talked about change, we've talked about how those two things are connected. We've talked about values and then also about how being clear about your values is an important aspect of leadership. So it's not just important to know what your values are, but also to live them. And um, just earlier, Fiona was talking about integrity, like doing, doing the right thing no matter whether anyone's looking or not. Um, so it's really, also important to recognize how our thoughts, our words, our actions, habits, and values are all interconnected. So we'd like to just offer this quick um, quote uh, from Gandhi about this, this whole idea of how beliefs lead to thoughts and then those lead to words, words lead to actions, actions to habits, habits to values, and values to destiny. So really just paying attention to how important those this is what it means to me is those little tiny everyday things are actually critically important. So similar is this idea of integrity. So we'll think a little bit more about this. This is, as some of you had said, a leadership value you have is authenticity, and which is a similar idea. This is a quote from Brene Brown, integrity is practicing your values, not just professing them. So, you know, it's, as I was saying, those everyday, day-to-day uh, -day behaviors and interactions are so critical. And I've been using the example when I talk about this, that some of the values that I hold as a leader are connection and relationship. And then I also have another value around responsibility and efficiency and getting things done. And sometimes those two things will almost come into conflict. If I'm rushing in in the morning and I have to, you know, a long list of things to do and I can just rush in and get into my office and dive right into the work without slowing down to greet uh, my coworkers and say good morning and take some time to tend to those relationships. I, not, I may not be living in alignment to my values of relationship and connection. So sometimes it, it can get a little tricky, but I think the, the most important thing is just to pay attention to um, how your behaviors are, ask for information, watch other people to, to gain some um, data or evidence about how, how uh, you influence people and whether the way that you want to pr present in the world is, is really what's happening. So, next slide. So, we'll just give you a few minutes to think a little bit about that. So, what, what are your leadership aspirations? Like, what's your big dream as a leader, how, would you, how do you want people to see you? Uh, we talked earlier about values and you had a big list, but if you had to pick the top one, so you know, going back to my example of connection and, and relationship and uh, efficiency, if I had to choose one, I would choose connection and relationship, not efficiency. That my most important one is connection. So really thinking about what is, what is your most, what's your guiding star? Um, are your values and behaviors are in alignment? How do you know? Um, a, an author and organizational leadership expert, Margaret Wheatley, uh, has a book called Who Do You Choose to Be? So really thinking about your behaviors are a choice. And so when you wake up in the morning, taking a few minutes to ask yourself, who do I choose to be today? Um, another author, Sh Shane Safir, uh, she poses these great questions. What do you want your legacy to be? How do you need to grow as a leader to manifest this vision? And then, you know, finally, just kind of in general, how do you want people to describe or remember you? So if you'd like, you can um, go back to that piece of paper that you'd set aside for later and just take a moment to write in, in, that, the, third, in th the third square of that paper, just what is your aspiration as a leader? What, what feels most important to you? What are some things that you, um, how do you want people to remember you? What's your legacy? And while you're doing that, I have a really lovely quote from Margaret Wheatley. Um, she's an article called, Who Do You Choose to Be? An Invitation 
to the nobility of leadership. And um, Margaret Wheatley writes, are you willing to use whatever power and influence you have to create islands of sanity that evoke and rely on our best human qualities to create, relate, and persevere? Will you consciously and bravely choose to reclaim leadership as a noble profession? One that creates possibility and humaneness in the midst of increasing fear and turmoil. I just love that quote. I think that the idea of thinking about leadership as a, a noble profession and our ability to create islands of sanity within, you know, those that are closest to us, that is just really a, a wonderful and inspirational way to think about leadership. All right, so now I'm gonna hand it over to Cassandra. All right, thank you. So we thought we talked about your beliefs about leadership, what you think it is, why you think it's important, what values you bring to it, and what your aspirations are. And now we're going to focus on what are you going to do, like to try something new or try something that you've done before but you haven't done in a while. So one of the things that people have typed in the chat is that, you know, to, to be successful, we need to be willing to take risks, to be vulnerable, and to be okay about making mistakes. And, you know, this is something that we all know, but it's not that often that we are willing to do it, especially people that are at the top of hierarchies and leadership positions. You know, they're often saying that they want people to take risks and try something new. And yet, if people don't see other people doing that and feeling safe when the thing doesn't happen perfectly, then people are often afraid to be the one to put, to put themselves on the line. So we want to invite you to pick something to try and it doesn't have to be terrifying. It could be something that is, um, that you think sounds fun and doing this is like an experiment. So putting your scientist hat on, and then we, you know, if you're, if you're writing in the paper, you can think about a couple of ideas that you might want to try. And we really want to start the next webinar hearing from a couple of people about what they've tried and how it went. Because one of the things that we know as adult learners is that we don't often feel comfortable with not being good at something right away. We become expert in our careers and our fields and our identity gets tied up in being this expert, and then we wanna try something new and we don't have that muscle built. It may be a long time since we've tried something new. And when you try something new, it doesn't always go as planned. So we wanna help you by giving you some tools to support your planning. So one of the things that Meredith is gonna send out at the end of the webinar is a tool that is in Monica and my book about trying something new and it's a series of questions that help you make a plan so let's see some people are typing in some things the uh some aspirations being positive and influence and leadership knowledge and wisdom and action and power and influence and then giving some form form of positive feedback in as many interactions as possible within the library even outside my team that is so fabulous people love that um I, I had a group once that I was, you know, we're brainstorming and when somebody came up with the idea of giving sticky notes to their coworkers and colleagues saying, I appreciate X. And I'll never forget this because there was um, a number of ideas that people could try. That was just one of them. And this one woman was talking at great lengths to her partner and I was, you know, kind of walking around the room and I heard this about how she was not gonna do that. She, she was insistent. She was like almost angry at that suggestion. And she kept saying that she told people all the time that she, was, that she appreciated them, but she wasn't gonna write it down. And then, I don't know what happened, but I saw them all two weeks later and this woman had tried it and she was up there telling everyone how wonderful it was and how, what, what came out of this. So I thought this was fascinating for so many reasons. But clearly, she'd already been giving positive feedback verbally. And then the difference of putting it on a sticky and handing it to somebody was huge, both for her and for them, because it was there. It was a reminder. You know, our brains sometimes forget the things that are good. You know, if you've heard that Velcro for the bad and, and Teflon for the good. So having even a sticky note is just huge. It can sit on somebody's desk and remind them that they're appreciated and valued. 
So who else has some ideas about things they might want to try? We have a couple more minutes for this. Somebody wrote, invite others to take time to be present during meetings. That's yes. A great one too. Yes. Oh, Connection even mentor supervisors. Kind of activities are really helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look, here's a big one. Coach and mentor supervisors to complete the budget process rather than doing it for them. Okay. That is a huge multitask project. Oh, um, do check-ins with staff before sitting, sitting down at your desk. Yeah. Yeah, like me. <laughs> Hiring administrators who will support the team's direction rather than expecting everybody to buy into every new administrator's vision. Uh-huh, good. So I know, Monica, you have a story about your no computer rule at your, at your office. Do you want to share a little bit about that? Somebody had said having, being present in meetings. Oh, yes. Okay, so yeah, this, is a, this was a really, um, I would say, a very courageous act by our CEO. So, you know, we've been really, as an agency, working hard to kind of integrate the, these collective um, collaborative leadership ideas and so as a team as a senior leadership team we developed some of our group norms together so we said what are some things that are important to us as a group in the way we want to behave together and some of the things that came up was um, we wanted to be present with each other and what we noticed was often um, people would have their computers in the meetings and I see this all the time everywhere I go but people trying to multitask and so you'll be in a, a meeting or a workshop and you're also on your computer doing email or other things so you can kind of it's that going back to the pace the rapid pace and everybody's trying to stay caught up so anyway we, we see multitasking a lot and as a group we decided that if we really want to live up to our value of being present with each other and present in the meeting we were going to decide to um, leave our computers um, away and not bring them to our meetings and leave them down at our desks and then come together and actually be present. So of course, you know, it's, it's not a, a hard, hard and fast rule. Sometimes someone will have a computer in case we need to look something up. But as a whole, we've all kind of stuck to that group norm of leaving our computers and our phones aside and really just focusing on our relationship and our interconnected with connectedness with ourselves when we're together in a meeting. And um, my experience has been that the group's trust has really solidified. We've been we've become closer together, um, and we get the work done. So that's mm -hmm. the story. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Okay. So I've gotten so Susan Smith has typed into the chat that she's going to try getting teachers input before staff meeting for ideas of inspiration and vision. And she is willing to help us tee off our next webinar by sharing how this goes. So thank you. And um, I've also asked Erin Ellis if she'd be willing to share. So this is great. Um, we do have a, uh, we may re reach out to you on email if, if um, we haven't called you out yet in this chat to see if you can help us kick off our next webinar. But we're happy to go to the next slide, Meredith, if you want to start um, wrapping up our session today and type in something you're taking away from this first session. So hopefully things were either a review and new or, or new and deepening your knowledge. Um, you know, Fiona and Monica and Meredith and I had about enough ideas for a 10 hour webinar. So we feel like it's a great <laughs> accomplishment to have got it down <laughs> to the length that it was for today. All right, thank you, Aaron will share. Richard, would you be willing to share too? All right, good. All right, Richard, yay, thank you. We got three people. <laughs> I think what Richard just wrote was really important. It's, it's, you know, some of this stuff is validation that we're doing some things well. And a lot of it is, um, you know, none of this is new. But I think the, the key is that we're, you know, it's that intentionality. It's taking time out of your busy schedules to reflect and um, think about what you might want to be um, holding in, in the forefront of your attention and what might need to be refreshed. And really just, um, you know, taking some time to, be intentional about putting these things into practice. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we know have time to work together with it with each other on it. I mean, that's great that we've had some time even on this webinar to think together to share ideas, mm -hmm. to get support for our ideas, to get validation for our ideas. 
it's, I think it's important. We all need the time to, to do that as well. Yeah. And I think the word practice is really important. It is a practice. Mm -hmm. It's not yeah. something that mm -hmm. you learn in a 30 minute, 45 minute webinar and are done. It is a continual. Yeah. yeah. Many of these things we know, but we just don't do them. I mean, you know, Monica's example of stopping and saying hello to people instead of rushing her to compute, uh, rushing to her computer. I mean, do we all not know that this is a good idea yet? How many times do we actually have the discipline to stop ourselves and slow ourselves down and take a breath and be like, it'll be okay if I get to my computer five minutes from now. Right. And like she said at the beginning, sometimes it's just those little acts of change that are so impactful. Yes. Right. That really can make a difference yep. in how things can yes. go forward. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. It doesn't need to be complicated or complex. We can, it's just paying attention, paying attention to ourselves and others. Yeah. Being present. Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. I'm just going to, yeah, you know, someone wrote language and reflection questions. Sorry. I just want to say one more thing. Yeah. Um, when you get these slides, there are some really good reflection questions that we've put on the slides. And so, you know, I, I was just one idea is you can take this back to your teams and just invite your group to reflect on one of the questions in writing and then just do a quick think pair share after and start conversations with the people that are close to you and, and where you're at in your own settings. Great. Oh, this was a wonderful kickoff to the series. Thank you, everyone who logged in live typed in the chat box, participated. Um, I just wanted to throw up this slide here and remind you that the next one is going to be November 15th, same time. Um, and if you have registered for the session, uh, which you are here today, then you are registered for the whole series, so you don't need to re-register. Um, we are going to be reflecting on our learnings from today's session. Um, and again, share some, how some of your experiments went. Thank you for the people who have already agreed to do it. Um, we're gonna review how to boost resiliency when trying new things and brainstorm what to try next. And then as I said, I was offering the 20% off um, for both mm -hmm. of the books. So I, again, will email everyone. And if you have not signed up to receive um, Redleaf Press emails or possibly have unsubscribed in the past, which is fine, but uh, we would love you to resubscribe so we can send you, again, the slides, the recordings. Um, it's going to be over email, Linda, is how I'm going to share the webinar. Um, and you can use the code CHANGE on our website, redleafpress.org, or you can call customer service. Um, I've got the numbers here. You can also find that information on the website. And I've got my email on there as well in case you have any questions or you just want to send me an email. Um, I love hearing uh, from people. So thank you guys um, so much. I'm really, I'm really excited for this series. Yeah, so I just typed in the Thanks, chat. Thanks, everyone. Invite your colleagues to view the recording and then try something and join us all live in November. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for joining. Thank you all. Great conversation. Yeah. All right. Everyone have a great Friday afternoon. <laughs> all right. Happy Friday. Happy Friday.